Welcome to What is Going Ohm's Synchronize Your Energies, the show that provides clear insights into the rapidly shifting energies that are upgrading human consciousness and evolving life on planet Earth. Each month, hosts Sandy Sedgbeer, Susie Miller, and Lee Harris share their observations and awarenesses and offer a stable means of synchronizing your energy fields so you can thrive, not just survive, during these tumultuous times. Here's your hosts, Sandy Sedgbeer, Susie Miller, and Lee Harris. Hello, Hello. I'm Sandy Sedgbeer. I'm Lee Harris. And I'm Susie Miller. And here we are, back with another edition of Synchronize Your Energies. And I don't know about you guys, but last month and the month before, we were touching on spiritual maturity. And as each month passes, I feel like I'm becoming more spiritually immature <laughs> <laughs> those darn mirrors yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. don't you just hate them <laughs> <laughs> and what does that so, mean to you sandy like how is that showing up <laughs> well this month it's been showing up for me with kind of um revisiting the past revisiting stuff we've talked about before several times and and you find this you think you, each time you think darn it i've nailed that i've nailed that you know and you haven't all those triggers that come back up and then you realize when you're in the middle of one that you and the person you're in the middle of it with they're just playing that game in the mirror again mm. do you uh, i find when that is happening for me sandy that what I, I used to kept I kept trying to um, kind of consciously figure out like the why of what was you know the playing out of that old program and then what usually would happen is right after that it would be well why is that playing out and it wasn't until actually I would say within the last few months anyway um, that I really just started feeling it. You know, it's like when it was there, when the the situation arose, instead of asking any questions around why, just sinking right into it and feeling how horrible <laughs> it feels to, <laughs> to have those triggers come up, you know. And that seemed to, for whatever reason, it seemed to move it much quicker than if I tried to go back into the why of the past. Does that make sense? You yeah, you you saying that, Susie. Also, Sandy, just a, one one thing that that for me feels personal to you. Before I go on to what feels universal, is you're you're moving around so much at the moment, and kind mm -hmm. of in this in this very transitory or more transitory place in your life, where you're a bit more open to to anything or where you're going next. Or and and I know for me, whenever I've been in those phases they're like really deep cleansing and healing and because it's like when you surrender your structure and your grounding and your routine and your home base um, all that stuff tends to come up more anyway but the universal piece of what you're saying which I I'm with you Susie and both of you I experience it the same way um, but it is this speed that's kind of pushing the healing through so many of us and also more people are awake and um, kind of processing their their stuff in a in a more conscious awake manner than we used to so i think i think all of that contributes too i think you're right did you want to add something there susie well i, I was just going to say um that it felt to me like it was a like yes there are the this waking up happening i'm feeling that and i'm feeling that you know, when you're interacting with somebody who, you know, when I'm interacting with the two of you, you know, we can have these nice conscious conversations. Um, but I, I will say that was fascinating to me because just recently I posted something on Instagram that I kind of really thought was like a no brainer. You know, I just thought it was just, um, it was just a statement. And but it was a statement about vaccines and it was fascinating to me to to feel the energy of the this very, you know, this very fertile and strong topic. People have such strong opinions about it. And it was just fascinating to me. So it was it almost felt like to me it was like 
it was I had stepped out of my my comfort zone, which is talking to people like you all and like our listeners and and kind of stepping into another arena, another space of consciousness, if you will, and feeling the the backlash. And it was fascinating to watch myself. It's like, can I respond or am I going to react? You know, and and even when I'm able to verbally respond, what's going on in my body, you know, <laughs> what reactions are naturally and organically coming up in my body. So it, it's just, it, yeah, it feels like we are, we are becoming more and more conscious on the one hand, but on the other hand, it feels like the more conscious we're becoming, the more we're also gaining access to um, maybe more of the collective where we've got to try that on a little bit more. And that's what makes me I wonder about that for you, Sandy, just, you know, in the situation that you're currently in. Right. Yeah, um, I think, you, you know, you're probably uh, very accurate there. One of the things that I did yesterday, um, because I was looking for some understanding and uh, ways in to handle, you know, this situation, um, was uh, I turned to astrology, as I often do, and, and it was so interesting because it talked about, um, you know, Venus and creating these, um, uh, should we say, challenging spots in relationships, coming to understand how things came to be the way they are in certain relationships and you know can we feel what's being mirrored to us and trace its path which is you know great advice but one of the things that came up beyond that in that astrology which i thought might really be helpful for everybody is um if we're talking about um the you know what we really need to be doing is be thinking more about um how do we make space for ourselves in life you know especially when life is changing so rapidly and do we know how to make space and you know there was various little pieces of advice but uh, one reminder was that um, first and foremost the most important place to start before we can effectively find or make physical and temporal space for ourselves is to consciously choose it mm -hmm. and to understand that we deserve it because simply being on the planet in our current form implies that all facets of us have a place at the table. Now, I don't know about you, but that certainly gave me a place to work from because the all facets of us, I mean, this is something we've also been discussing the last few months, all of the, you know, the shadow side, uh, the, um, you know, the empathy, the compassion, but at the same time, the narcissism and all of those things that are coming up for all of us in the world. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. One thing that hit me when you were just talking. So we're we're in Las Vegas today. Um, I've been a fan of Sarah McLachlan for 22 years. And um, about, I don't know, two months ago, I saw that she was doing three nights in Vegas, which is about a five hour drive from us. So I said, OK, let's go. Um, so we booked the tickets. We saw her last night. She was fantastic. But on my way in, um, in order to have the few days off that I'm, I'm having now, and, and we've just had a really busy period, um, I noticed that I was having to invite myself to land in the present moment over and over and over again, because you know, within within the with the work that I do, which is is a bit of a mission th for me, and I don't mean I'm working manically at it. I just mean it's it's a it's a sense of purpose that I have every day to step out of that consciously for quite a few days. And it's not f what I'm sharing here is not. I don't think that's about my work. I think that's about any of us who step out of our routine or step out of what can be the doing energy that is so normal for us as human beings. Um, so I often find it interesting when people, I don't know about you guys, but whenever you know you go on holiday or something, people go, oh, have a great time. You know, I normally think it takes a couple of days to kind of like adjust and go, oh, I can change mode. And, and just what it showed me yesterday, um, even though I'm having lots of gratitude about my life regularly all the time at the moment, is just that mode that we're so used to living in. And there was a woman at my gym the other day who was sat there meditating on the mats. 
and I was standing near her while she was doing it, and I was supposed to be concentrating on something else, and I just couldn't take my eyes off her because of how she felt. And it was so markedly different to all of us in the gym doing, you know? So mm. um, I feel like that, that's something that, that we do have to cultivate. I think, as you said, it's we actually have to not only make space for it, but but recognize it's not going to be easy because I think sometimes it's that idyllic, oh, great, you're going on holiday for a week. But I don't know many people who go on holiday for a week and from the minute they go there, everything's hunky-dory and they're just in a relaxed state for a week, which is kind of that crazy collective <laughs> program that we're taught and told and sold. Yes. That whole piece, Lee, that's brilliant about, you know, that being in the now and just being present because it feels like to me that these transitions, it's like I've been almost placed in this state lately where I have a lot of time, you know, I'm, I'm doing my classes and I'm doing the things that I'm offering in the world. And at the same time, there seems to be a lot of space in between right now. And and there was such a there was such a retaliation <laughs> against that space initially. It's like, don't give me that space. Let me keep doing. And um, and it's been and also watching my own mind as to when I do have all of that space, you know, am I jumping to the future? Am I, you know, am I in the past? Um, and just grappling with um, grappling with time. You know, having time and can I allow time and can I allow things to be fluid and easy and and how different that is than, you know, m maybe my five or ten year ago self, you know, this opportunity to just, yeah, be with the now, even when the now's not all filled up with something fun to do. Yeah. And it's interesting the ways that we're all talking about this space. We're talking about giving ourselves space to be. Um, and, you know, you're talking about you literally have lots of free time at the moment. And I'm looking at it from, you know, within the small space that I'm confined in. How do I find me in this, you know, narrow space? And how do we hold ourselves in whatever space we're in? Absolutely. Yeah. And that moment by moment fluctuation, those moment by moment, yeah, details of, you know, all this space and then in Las Vegas and then from Las Vegas to in a small space. And then, you know, it's like it's it's this moment by moment juggling act. Um, yeah. I find it interesting that you're in Las Vegas, at Lee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So do I. You know, I've always had a weird, I've had such a weird relationship with this place. Whenever I've done channeling workshops here, they've been phenomenal, of course, because of the cosmic energy in the place. So I've always loved the experience of running like channeled workshops here because it's like, <laughs> wow, this place is super crazy. It's perfect for this. Um, but but also, you know, it's a real mixed bag. Like there's, there's all this kind of creative stuff. But I also find it very um, jarring to the nervous system. So it's kind of, as soon as Sarah McLachlan was over, I was like, why did we say we'd stay here two nights? Can we go? You know, and it's like, no, kind of, I really relate to what you just said, Susie. No, now you find yourself in this place that is disorienting, that is a lot of information. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a hive of energy. And on another level, you know, the entire universe, everybody must be feeling kind of displaced because there have been so many shocks to our system in many ways, to our psyche, you know, um, yeah. daily being assaulted by it all that I think everybody is feeling a bit out of their normal space. I agree. Yeah, and I think that's not going anywhere anytime soon. Nope. <laughs> you know, it's like, it just feels like it's, one adjustment after another and whether it's the physical energy you know the the proximity to you know bright lights in big cities like lee is in right now or 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 the space you know the solitude or the confinement of a space it's like there's different kinds of information in both of those spaces right and you know how do we how do we negotiate that information 
um, you know, subtle and blatant, you know, um, on a moment by moment basis and try to do so without, um, yeah, wreaking too much havoc in our lives, you know, creating some stability for ourselves in the process. I find myself right now, like, um, like just, am I breathing? You know, simple questions like that. Am I breathing? If I'm in the middle of Los Angeles, am I breathing? If I'm in the middle of space, you know, in the house, am I breathing? It's, um, it's, it's fascinating to me actually to watch because there's just as much information, I think, coming in in the silence as there is coming in from all these different, you know, angles right now, or at least that's what I'm experiencing. So true. I kind of, um, I know we're probably going to hit a break any second, but it makes me think of what you were saying, Sandy, about the focus on yourself and creating space for yourself. Yeah. I felt like a broken record in the energy updates the last couple of years, because uh, I'm, I seem to always be talking about that. But, but it's because I keep being given that message that if we can focus ourselves, then whatever's going on around us is okay. And and for me, listening to you, Susie, I'm literally on the 62nd floor in the Wynn Encore, looking out <laughs> at this. Uh, we've got. I mean, we've got. I deliberately put us up really high so that we could get away mm -hmm. from the energy on the ground, so I can see the mountains. And mm -hmm. just the mountains are so amazing. And mm -hmm. what I'm what I'm shown in Vegas and in my life all the time is it, it's all about where your focus is. So I can focus on the mountains out the window. Mm -hmm. I can focus on the cars. I can focus on the people. I can focus on the shopping mall. It's like there are all these choices. And, and to me, this <laughs> this view is like the metaphor of where's your focus right now? And if if you're not enjoying what you're feeling, see how you can change your focus. I want to come Brilliant. back to this after the break. You're listening to What Is Going On's monthly Synchronize Your Energy show, in which energy guide, author, channeler, and musician Lee Harris, visionary speaker, author, telepathic communicator, and multi-dimensional seer Susie Miller, and I engage in a raw and unscripted roundtable sharing of what the cosmic energies have been stirring up this month. We'll be back with more after the break. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Namaste, friends. This is Deva Pramala Miten. And we want to let you know that we will be in America and Canada this May. We'll be coming with our Wings of Mantra World Tour. Coming up the West Coast to Boulder, Santa Fe, Sedona, Scottsdale, Santa Barbara, L.A., Marin, Santa Cruz, San Jose, Escondido, Edmonds, and up to Canada to Victoria and Vancouver. You can find details on our website, davapramalmiten.com. Hope to see you there. Lots of love. Namaste. Own Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ohmtimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. More than 24 million Americans have an autoimmune disorder, and that number continues to grow. I'm Sharon Saylor, and I'm one of those 24 million. To put that number in perspective, cancer affects about 9 million and heart disease up to 22 million. That's why I've brought together top experts and those thriving regardless of their diagnosis to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information. Join me, Sharon Saylor, Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio to find out how to live your life uninterrupted. 911, what is your emergency? My kid shot himself. Every day, eight kids and teens are unintentionally killed or injured by loaded and unlocked guns. It wasn't locked. It wasn't locked. It wasn't locked. Okay. Learn how to make your home safer at endfamilyfire.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and End Family Fire.
Welcome back to the Synchronize Your Energy show with me, Sandy Sedgbeer. Me, Lee Harris. And me, Susie Miller. So focus, focus. It's, it's an interesting word because focus is one of those things that is so easily um, shattered so easily shattered and again referring to what's going on in the world i think many people are experiencing um you know it's hard to maintain your focus when i was living in um scottsdale in the desert which is lovely um everything was expensive you know there was lots of sky around me there was lots of uh, green um, and everything was wide and it felt very easy to focus there because I always felt like I was plopped down in the middle of this great big space but when you're in an urban area and you've got everything that that entails it becomes harder and harder to focus and now with all the assault of the news and everything else that's going on it's it must be so difficult for some people yeah and yet you know it's interesting with the news isn't it because i i do think that's a choice too i think <laughs> um and, and certainly it's a choice i've made to very minimally know the news like if there's a serious emergency or something that i want i would like to know about but if it's some of the nonsense that's just kind of being fed to us um that that, that just isn't real um, I hooked out of that many years ago and I've become more strident about not paying attention to it in the last couple of years because I've noticed it doesn't feel good. And if, if it knocks me off balance, then clearly it's not doing anyone any good. You know, it's like that's, the, that's kind of my, my, my opinion of it. And I still think if we really had news on Earth, why aren't we reporting the good news too? You know, mm -hmm. it's like we all just accept that we call it the news, but it's actually the bad news. It's the bad news, mm -hmm. the conflict news, and in some cases, you know, the mistruths, um, as many journalists and, you know, news reporters will attest to over the years. So, um, so yeah, I, I, I think that's one area of focus, but you are right. I mean, I do think that this time there are challenges, not least things like the social media cycles that we're all, you know, mm -hmm. kind of in or going through or reacting to as well. And I think just the speed of information as well is just very new for our generation. Um, well, yeah. I, I think that there's, you know, I mean, what I'm watching with some of the groups that I've been facilitating and in, in my myself as well is, I think also as we become more and more awake, as we as we wake up to the more of ourselves, we have access to much more subtle information. And so what I've noticed is sometimes, I mean, I'm I'm like you, Lee, it's I I it just doesn't serve me to be, you know, amongst the news and what I typically will do is just say, if it's something I need to be aware of, make me aware of it, you know, um, otherwise just kind of stay away from it. But what I'm noticing too is that, you know, we're getting to this place where we're really understanding that we are literally a collective consciousness. We are all one. And so regardless of physical proximity, at least in my world, I'm noticing that yeah, it's like it's almost like a wave of energy or a wave of information will come through and it for a moment it will it's it's like knocks me off center and it's not until I start, you know, kind of really reorienting myself, you know, again, breathe, breathe first and then once I've stabilized myself, you know, where is that coming from? You know, where am I noticing that energy? And a lot of times somebody's sometimes somebody's face will come up in my mind sometimes something else is um, coming up more on a collective it might be a place but I, I think that we can't negate the fact that people are becoming more and more sensitive to all kinds of subtle energies right now so it's not just the information that's present in our physical environments and negotiating that to me is what I was saying earlier feels like a yeah this mm, this beautiful opportunity you know this beautiful moment by moment um, feeling it through I guess is the best way I can say it 
Does that make sense? It does. It does. I want to think yeah. about that for a minute. It, it also makes me think about the, uh, I remember in the energy update last month, um, there are things in the energy updates that I do that I, I don't personally connect to, but they come through. Mm -hmm. And one of the things was the checking out thing um, and that that was kind of a, a kind of thing that was going on last month. And for me, I, I definitely felt it a little bit before then, but um, I've kind of gone the other way. I've, I've kind of become a bit more hyper uh, conscious in the last few weeks and hyper clean with the way I'm treating myself. And, yeah. and it, it does exactly what you're saying, Susie. It's like it makes you <laughs> even more kind of crystal clear about, about everything that you're feeling and sensing, which I think is why the checking out thing is also showing up because I was surprised how many people responded to the energy update going, oh, yeah, the checking out thing. I really, I really yeah. relate to that. Or I've got friends who are literally like trying to poison themselves so that they can switch off. That makes so much sense to me, Lee, and, and I, I wonder if that doesn't have an awful lot to do with the fact that we are more, we do have more access to subtle information than we did before. And so a lot of times, I know in my own experience too, it's, you know, you find yourself, you know, after the second hour of looking at YouTube videos and the question pops up, it's like, exactly what are you doing, Suze? <laughs> you know, where, where have you gone? <laughs> you know? Um, so, and, you know, the, when that question comes about, I mean, the, the response that, you know, usually comes after that is a, more of a question. It's like, what, what is overwhelming me in this moment? Mm -hmm. You know, what is, um, what am I trying to get away from? You know, what would I rather not feel or be connected to? And, you know. Um, sometimes with an awful lot of judgment and sometimes with very little, it's like, okay, I'm just going to go back to watching a couple more YouTube videos and then I'll let you know. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so you're talking about distraction. When you first said the words checking out, Lee, I thought you meant literally checking out. Oh, yeah, um, no, I forget that it has that meaning too. No, um, yeah, d people distracting themselves from life. Mm. But like quite extreme, I mean, because, you know, of course, we can all do that all day, you know, at various moments all day. Uh, you know, how present are we? No, this was more the extremes, like people noticing extremes of checking out in themselves um, <laughs> or you noticing it in people around you was the message. And it was funny. I it's always those ones that I can't personally relate to in quite the way that I'm called to deliver them that fascinate me when a bunch of people go, Oh my God, that's so what I'm experiencing and seeing. So that, that was educational to me last month. So what do you advocate when people say to you, you know, and both of you, I mean, you both do a lot of teaching, leading workshops, etc. So people must always be asking you for advice when they, you know, they're finding it hard to deal with some of this. What do you say to them? Do you want to go first, Lee? <laughs> I was going to ask you the same question. <laughs> now we need a minute. So... I was checked out. Sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was watching YouTube. Sorry. What did you say? Um, <laughs> um, it, you know, I suppose, <laughs> I suppose it depends. <laughs> now I've got the giggles. Um, I suppose it depends on, on, on the way that the person is, is asking the question, because some people have very specific reasons that they're finding things acutely painful but you know the, the thing for me is always how balanced are things for you at the moment and when I say balanced I don't mean that we have to feel balanced I mean some of the classic balances for us in life how is your community how is your creativity and your sense of expression how are you doing with your physical body what you're eating and putting in it how much have you been exercising are you seeing enough sun like literally going through a checklist and finding mm -hmm. where there's an exposure because usually one of those things will be a bit low and i think when you get to that point of overwhelm it's not going to be some mental explanation about what's going on that's going to give you any relief beyond 10 minutes it's going to be starting to actively practice with your body and with your focus some new things and putting support in place because usually when someone's gone into that level of overwhelm they either need to be helped back out or they need or and or 
they need to have a few other things in life that are keeping them focused or stable. So, you know, there's often a bunch of questions I'll ask, like, and I know it sounds obvious, but are you watching the news all day? Oh, yes, it's terrifying me. OK, well, you're going to stop that, you know, kind of just identifying where is the stress being really uh, pin, uh, kind of um, triggered in the nerve in the person. Yeah, I love that, Lee. I love the external kind of checklist. And and I have a tendency to I have a tendency to go internal. And I think we we talked about it um, last week too, or a couple um, last month or a couple months ago when we were talking about you know that each one of us is this community of aspects. You know, so a lot of times when you know, if somebody's coming to me and they're feeling really out of balance or when I'm feeling out of balance myself, you, you know, what what part of my internal community, what part of myself is is kind of screaming the loudest right now? And sometimes allowing that aspect to have a voice um, will will calm things down enough that I can make another choice where I can I can go to yeah make another physical choice but what I notice in my own experience anyway is that that when something's really loud when something's really out of balance for me it's usually out of balance because something internal um, is out of balance and so I yeah I usually would invite people to yeah, what is that aspect of yourself? You know, how old is he or she? Where is he or she? What does it want to tell you? Um, yeah, that kind of information and just sometimes giving it a voice kind of just brings us back into the body enough that, yeah, I have a tendency to work with a, a lot of people that it's it's really easy for them to go up and out, especially with a lot of the families that I work with, the kids with autism, you know, so so how can we get them, how can we get them first here? And then once they're here, how can we get them to take a step from that, from that placement? So, yeah. Balance is, is an interesting thing because we all subtly feel it when we're out of balance, but we don't always know exactly what it is that we need to do to regain balance. Mm. But you're constantly doing balance and integration sessions, Susie. I mean, you know, this whole integration thing is like, goodness, how much more have we got to integrate? <laughs> all of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever that means, all of it, yeah. I just, it's so funny that you say that, Sandy, because somebody was, I was talking to a client the other day, and she was a little, you know, disgruntled about the fact that it's like she just is having an awful lot coming up, you know, hitting her from all different angles all at the same time, and that was her question, too. It's like, well, how long is this going to go on, and, you know, is this going to happen forever, and... And, you know, the response is, is yet, yes, I mean, we've got this opportunity to integrate from the moment we come into this, onto this planet until the minute we leave it. I think what really begins to shift and change, though, is this, oh, something is up, something is available for integration versus, oh, my gosh, this is another thing that I've got to integrate. <laughs> you know, this is one more thing that i got to deal with. And... And somewhere along the line, there really becomes this transition um, in the way we perceive what's arising, you know, because beautiful things arise and really not so wonderful things arise all the time. But how do we meet that? You know, what do we actually do with that information? And can both of those be empowering? I mean, and that's you know, that's my question back more often than not is, yeah, can both of these get to a place where they're empowering? And of course, you know, we all have preferences. We like the, we like the good ones and we don't like the, you know, the challenging or the negative ones so much. Yeah, that's reframing, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm very good at helping other people reframe <laughs> the, way, <laughs> the way they're looking at something. <laughs> <laughs> and not not so hot when it comes to doing it for myself. 
Well, I think it's always easier to do it for, you know, in support of somebody else than it is to do it for ourselves. You know, it's, um, and at the same time, yeah, it's like, I mean, even just, even just catching it. And, you know, I mean, you're really good about laughing about it. You know, you, you laugh about these things, about these, uh, challenges that come up much more quickly than I do. <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm like it, working it out and you're like, you're already into the giggle stage, which I think is probably, um, more beneficial than not. Yeah. I think it's one of the benefits of being born British, eh, Sandy? <laughs> I really do. I mean, I really do think that. Are you telling me I've got a lot to learn from you guys? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> oh, no, I, no, trust me, it goes both ways. Um, but no, I do. I really think that's, for me, that's one of the most, uh, that's one of the best qualities of the British culture in terms of yes. humour. Yeah. I really, because I think humour is so, is such a healing force. And I yeah. think especially as certainly in my generation we weren't taught emotional expression we were taught emotional repression and i think it's better now um humor has been a great balance for that to let people find a way to let things out give things air um yeah lighten up about certain things yeah it's like pricking the bubble isn't it i mean it really does allow you to shift that energy and you can mm -hmm. feel it in yourself i mean you know i was going through something at the beginning of the show and now it's like oh, it really doesn't matter <laughs> <laughs> i was going through something at 9 a.m and now it's like oh it doesn't matter <laughs> i think that's the other thing you ask the question you know what what's the best advice to give someone who's going through an overwhelming time and honestly one of the things i always try and remember is this too shall pass because it, mm -hmm. it all does but in the yes. moment when it's tight or constricted we don't often have the ability to zoom out like that and go oh this is going to move and sometimes mm -hmm. that can be reassuring it can it can you know let the state start to calm down a bit more too yeah. I remember you saying that, Lee, on one of our past conversations when we were just chatting, and it's come back very frequently. It's like, especially when the intensity is so strong, you know, it's this too shall pass. And I always add, and we'll never be the same because of it. <laughs> oh, I like that. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And on that note, I'm going to take us into the break. You're listening to What Is Going On's monthly Synchronize Your Energies show, and after the break... Susie will be gifting us with another opportunity to take a deep breath and let it all go. We'll be back <laughs> with more in a few moments. The best of the holistic, spiritual and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Hello, I'm Lisa Berry. Join me every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for Light on Living. A chance to see new, hear different, and feel more as I shine the spotlight on all the ways to lighten the load of life's challenges. Light on Living is your link to that new way you're looking for, that new understanding that will enhance your life, and that positive connection that will support your growth. So join me and you'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, ascendinghearts.com. Opiates has taken everything and everyone I've ever loved away from me. Everything. I blew my ankle out and I got prescribed pain pills by my doctor. If making my detox public is going to help somebody, I'm all for it. So I just wish I would have had a warning. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth. Spread the truth. A message from Truth, the Ad Council, and ONDCP. Welcome back to Synchronize Your Energy Show with me, Sandy Sedgbeer. And me, Lee, Lee. Harris. <laughs> and me, Susie Miller. 
<laughs> you checked out there, didn't you? I, I focus <laughs> elsewhere for a second, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, bring your focus back and let me know. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back in the room. If there's anything that you want to share before we go on with Susie's um, integration session. No, I, I, I think... Um, I've really, as ever, I really love this kind of roundtable conversation that I that I don't think is just us three. I feel like when we come on, we we tune in on what's going on for everyone else out there as well. Um, but but I guess one thing that just kind of hits me is, it's like you were saying, Susie. There is like this uh, sensitivity that not everybody is feeling. And um, mm. I noticed it in Vegas this morning because it was funny, I said to Stephen, you know, I do believe that more and more people are waking up, but I was having a hard time believing it walking through the hotel this morning. Yeah. I was looking at everyone going, wow, this is like a different reality, you know? <laughs> um, but, but again, what I invited myself to do was to look closer at those people. And when I did that, I was like, oh, okay, that's the mask. And that's the mask that everybody's wearing in a space like this where it's built on masks. Um, doesn't mean the masks are all completely untrue, but mm -hmm. there's a surface level being shown. And if I really looked closer at the hearts and the faces of people, I could start to feel who and where they were. But yeah, the difference is, is uh, those people like us who are a bit more wired this way, that, that we are just more aware of our feelings and our sensitivities which, as we know, can be a, a good thing and a challenging thing, mm. but also just that that's becoming more and more the norm, that I think people's feelings are getting pushed to the surface. Um, hence some of this kind of uh, extremist reactions that we see. When you were mentioning the, the vaccine piece earlier, Susie, mm. and the kind of kickback, I think the one thing that the Zs, my guides, have said is the polarization is part of the transformation. They said that you, you're seeing the polarization because one group is rising in a certain direction and so the people who don't want to go there or feel they can't go there or feel that their own world world is being eclipsed um, are, are kicking back a bit harder. So, And of course the kicking goes both ways because we can all be in the dark or in the light in ourselves at any moment. So we're actually not different to the group that we might think we're exactly. opposed to um, overall, yeah. but it just it just perhaps our perhaps our most dense area is is a bit more polar to the other person in the other group um even though we can all connect to light and dark in ourselves absolutely absolutely susie is there anything more you want to add yeah no I, other than the fact that there's you know just based on what lee was saying there's there's also this opportunity to, like he was just saying, to see beyond the mass, to see where we're more alike than we are different. You know, that um, that passion, that whatever that is that makes somebody choose whatever they choose, that it's valid and it's, you know, it's, it's right for them. And um, yeah, anyway, it's just, yeah, Th those opportunities are present everywhere right now too. Okay. Well, in the uh, immortal words of a once popular British TV show and song that nobody but me probably remembers, that was the month that was. So <laughs> it's over. And now the best thing we can do is let it go. And who better to help us move and transform that energy than Susie Miller. Thank you. So um, just listening to the conversation from beginning to end and participating in, it feels like the opportunity here is to really reset our base, you know, regard, regardless if we're extremely energetically sensitive or we're kind of just coming into a new level of sensitivity. It just, where is that base? Where is that foundation within us that we can kind of jump back to when we need it? So let's kind of create that space um, here in the next few minutes. So if everybody will just take a couple deep inhales and exhales, breathe yourself back into your body. So no matter where all those different aspects of yourself are, right? And no matter what else is pulling you from the outside world, 
just go ahead and, and move your attention point inward. You might move it into your heart, maybe even better, kind of down into the solar plexus or maybe in the bottom of your feet, wherever you need to be present to yourself. So when we go there, when you all take me to these places, it's like there's a hum. There's a vibrational hum that's going on that in, in that space. So no matter how grounded or present we have been in our realities, it's almost as if that has been amped up um, and continues to get amped up. And so there's a buzz to it. So um, hold on a second. Okay, go ahead and again, breathe into that space. And we're going to neutralize a little bit of that hum. We're going to do that with a tone here. Okay, just and let the let the sound just go to wherever you have your attention point now, your heart, your solar plexus, the bottom of your feet. Okay. <sighs> As we use that tone, we're just flushing out um, some of the, I'm going to call it the battle energy. So we know that when we have influxes of new information that are coming in, that, that energy comes in. And then we also have information that is trying to leave um, at the same time. It's like whatever that new subtle level of information is that's um, trying to get integrated. Um, it can't get integrated unless we're moving out some of the old energy. And I think that's also why a lot of us are, you know, we're a little edgy, we're a little tender, we're a little bit quick on the trigger right now. Um, and again, we've got very subtle information coming in, so we're going to have some level of density coming out. So everywhere where that density is, is coming to the surface, Let's just, again, we're going to collect it all up, just as if we could put it in this big sphere out in front of us. And and no matter what it looks like, it might, you know, that energy might really be hot. It might be anger. It might be rage. It might be fear. It might be um, a sense of abandonment or longing or whatever these these feelings are, these energies are that are emerging. Go ahead and place them all in this sphere. And again, we're placing them there just so we can contain them so that they can be held by us, by our totality. Yeah, there we go. We're going to add a little blue star right to the center of that sphere. We're going to spin that blue star and just let all of that information almost be absorbed by or cleared out by that blue star. So the blue star will spin, the, the sphere will go clear. There you go. And isn't it amazing that you can just, again, we were talking about focus earlier. Isn't it amazing we can just put our energy, put we can focus it within that sphere and we can do something about it in the moment. So spin out that whole sphere, let it go clear. We're going to collapse that sphere right back into that blue star and take that nice little blue star and drop it into that into your heart, into your solar plexus, into the bottom of your feet, wherever you've got your focus and implode that into billions of frequencies of light. OK, so now let's take a nice deep inhale and exhale from this space. And let's, let's notice what's different. Let's notice what has shifted already just because we've used our intention, we've used our focus, we've brought ourselves back to the now. Okay, there you go. 
So what I notice immediately, and this happens repeatedly, every time we kind of readjust the energy, the heart space has an opportunity to expand again. So a lot of times when we're contracting our energy, it's because our hearts have also contracted and they can contract for any number of reasons, you know, energetic overwhelm or somebody standing right in front of you who you're having a disagreement with. That really doesn't matter. But the moment we begin to really feel ourselves being edgy, um, it's usually the time that our heart, heart space has closed. And a lot of times it closes almost instinctually um, as a protective mechanism for whatever is going on, like a safety mechanism. So let's, let's just open the heart just a little bit more. Open that space. And what happens if when we're greeted with these experiences, whether they be energetic or physical and mental thoughts that we're having in our head, emotional, in those moments when we can catch it, can we give ourselves just the, just the message to open, open the heart instead of close it? Open, open, there we go. All right, so we're just gonna, you're gonna hear another tone and again, it's just to create this pattern where irritation, agitation, frustration means number one, the heart is probably closing or closed. And number two, in that moment, can we simply use our focus and intend that it reopen? And then notice what happens because it does. Right, okay, so let's go right back into that heart space and let's just make this matter. Let's let's make this possible. Okay, que queda materia, quiero con materia, sí. Ay. deep inhale and exhale and just notice now are you are you in your bodies are you present to your body is your heart a little bit more fluid or a little bit more open than it was do you feel a little bit better equipped to face another day no matter what that day might bring. There we go, beautiful. All right, so let's begin to just breathe back into our bodies. Wiggle those beautiful fingers and toes. Stretch out your arms and your legs. Yeah, really breathing into the heart. Sometimes when you open your eyes from that kind of experience, when the heart's been reopened, things will look brighter. Things literally, there's more space around you. There you go. All right. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Sandy, are you back? <laughs> I'm, I, I'm back and I am certainly a lot calmer and more present and uh, a little bit more balanced than I was before. So thank you for that. We, we, aim to, we aim to please, yeah. <laughs> or not, but yeah. Yeah, yeah thank you. Uh, anyone got any par parting comments? Should we start again? <laughs> Should we do another hour? Yeah. 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 It's very calming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would be an, an interesting uh, exercise, but yeah. we're almost out of time, so we really do need to wrap it up. Um, if there's nothing either of you want to say, I have a couple of closing announcements. But first, anything? Anything? Nope. Anyone? Can I anyone? announce one thing, Sandy? Of course. Um, um, I would like to say that we've got a brand new um, series going on called 
um, Awesomeism, the Autism Integration Series. For So for any of you all that um, have kids on the spectrum or work with them, I would love to have a conversation with you about that. So don't mean to give a plug at the end of this show, but you asked. <laughs> so you, I'm excited you about that one. <laughs> You're certainly entitled to plug whatever because your work is great, both of you. Oh, Lee, anything you want to share? Um, I, well, I have a new energy update going on YouTube um, on Tuesday or Wednesday next week, which I just recorded. So, yeah, if anyone wants a, a bit more of a dive with me about what I'm picking up energetically and you're not on my newsletter, um, you can see that on YouTube or you could sign up for my newsletter at my site, okay. which is leeharrisenergy.com. And I just want to say, if you didn't hear the April 11th conversation that Lee and I had on the show about his new book, Energy Speaks, mm -hmm. Messages from Spirit on Living, Loving and Awakening, you can listen or download it from What's Going On's podcast archives on Home Times Radio. And we'd love to hear your thoughts on this month's show. So you can email them to me at sandy.sandysedgebeershow at gmail.com. That's it from Synchronize Your Energies. I'm Sandy Sedgebeer. I'm Lee Harris. <laughs> and I'm Susie Miller. And we'll be back on May the 28th, I think it is. Certainly the last Thursday of May. Till then, goodbye. Bye-bye.